Here we go. So I've got um, this image here, and I'm going to go through a few a few processes with you. So at the moment, uh, you can see that I've um, used the object selection tool. I've gone around and I've tidied it up, and I've given this image image a mask, and then it's got a white background sitting in behind it. Now the um, the first thing here is this. Uh, oh, I'll just check you guys are all looking at Photoshop now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so the first thing here is if I go to, um, if I go to channels, we've been using uh, alpha channels all the time, and this one's associated with a layer here. It's got that mask that's not really doing anything, but it's sitting in there. So uh, red, green, and blue, if I switch, the eyes off and just do it one at a time, everything's black and white. So this is the red channel, the green, and the blue. And then when you combine them together, so the blue and the green, and then the red is giving you um, giving you a full color image. So uh, RGB or red, green, blue is always what you're using on a screen. Uh, when you're doing um, uh, print work, you're dealing with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so this is very, very simply the idea between um, additive and subtractive color. And uh, you may have gone through, <coughs> gone through this stuff. This is the challenge with always trying to um, get a screen to reproduce uh, what you're gonna get in print. And it's because one process is additive color and one is subtractive. So, um, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So essentially, a kind of blue, you know, blue, red, yellow, black. When they combine to, without the black, when those colors combine together, <coughs> it gives you like a, not a very good black. It gives you like a dirty, muddy black. And so they added K or black so that you could get a good printout. Now, with RGB, all of those colors mixed together, instead of giving you black, give you white. So the addition of them um, gives you white light. So the processes are complete opposites of each other. <clears throat> and it's, these are just variations on what you know with primary colors. So you know the basis for everything is um, uh, red, blue, yellow. If I got that right, God, I can't even remember my primary colors. So uh, that's your, um, your basics of the color and you can mix those colors together and you'll get any other color that, um, that you need. So it's the same sort of process here. So as an example, if I click on the red, I shall put the, um, the eye back on by RGB, and I get the arrow tool, oops. It won't let me move it because I haven't got anything selected, so I have to go Command A. Oh. Uh, it's a little, um, oh yeah, sorry, it just didn't have it selected in the other, um, the other options. So with the red, I can see I've got that one selected. Mm. So I move it and you would have seen this, um, uh, process on a lot of a lot of images. I mean, this one almost it starts to look like the three D images. Green. I can Command A again and offset those. And the blue, I can leave it where it is, or again, I can select it <coughs> and move it. The oddity of this image is just because it's sitting within a mask. So if I hold down shift and click on the mask, you can see the whole image. So that mask is containing it to a certain, um, a certain shape. So shift, click on that. So we've got our mask again. Now, all of these can be messed with it. So if we go back to the channels, these things are just working in um, black and white and we can do anything to them. So, with this one here, 
the red one, and I haven't really, um, I haven't really dealt with the the filters too much. I don't personally, I don't use them, but I'll go in here for some kind of distortion. So filter, distort, and I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to wave. So with this, I can give it a, a slight distortion, so I can bump up the wavelength. It's a shame this one doesn't quite give you a, um, a preview. I'll keep that right down. The um, if it should, I'll just give it a slight distortion so I won't try and um, mess with anything here. I can control it a wee bit more with the um, uh, scale. You can see that kind of eyebrow twisting up and down. Oh, no, I won't mess with the number of generations. So I'll go okay. And now if I switch these off, you can get, see you're getting some kind of distortion in there. So let's try it with the others. I'll go to the green, filter, And then we've got one more with the blue. Uh, yeah, I'll just go back to the same thing. I'll go back to wave. Oh yeah, I like that one. And again, with all of these, oh, Command A, we can start to, to shuffle them around. The, re the reason that this um, process is interesting is that if we realize that everything is in this kind of um, black and white mode, it, it relates itself to um, screen printing, that you can use, uh, inks with a certain amount of um, transparency with overlay, and you can do the same sort of thing, black and white, you can print this a certain color, and the next, and the next, and obviously it's just the mask that's holding it. So this is very, very applicable to um, uh, screen printing, and quite often Photoshop is used in this way to kind of get the um, black and white uh, sets or screens, and then to print them in, in whatever, you know, whatever color you desire. So we'll go for something that's a little more, a little more traditional. So if I just revert this. Okay, so this is much, this is um, much more of a kind of classical way to use uh, Photoshop for screen printing to get your screens. And it's using the channels in a way that we're kind of familiar with now. So if I get this layer, Select all, or Command A, Command C to copy it. I go into my channels, and I just make new channels. Made one, paste it, two. So I'm going to make three. You can you can do as many um, screens as you want, but we'll just stick with this. So the first one, I go Command L. So the levels, and what I'm trying to do is it's it's like post it's like posterization. I'm just trying to get um, uh, certain levels of tonality. So with this one, if I push the white slider right up, bring the black down a bit. This would end up being one screen for a color. So I'm trying to get a screen that will just do the darker areas. I go okay with that. I go down onto the next one. 
Command L, and I'll go for something that is the opposite. So now, now there's a little bit of white coming through here. So before I had all the shadows, now my focus is kind of on the um, on the highlights. I'll go OK. I'll drag this one in between. Doesn't really matter about the um, the order. And now I'm going to try and get somewhere in the middle. So now it's these sorts of areas through here. So it's more than just the dark here on that. Starting to um, bring more of this detail through. So I'll go OK. And essentially all I'm going to do now is layer, the, layer them up and colour them. So, so I'll jump to layers for a second here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, uh, put in a, a darker colour, so I'll go solid colour, which I'll just check and make sure I've got nothing else activated, solid colour, Going to go for kind of dark purple, and I'll chuck that under underneath. All right, so I'll start to layer up these um, layer up these colors. The, the only reason it's it's coming out a bit funny is because I've still got the eye on beside Alpha One, so that's all I've got at the moment on the layers is I've just got that colour showing and then I've got a blank um, screen. So back on channels, uh, we can take this one here and in this case I'm not going to um, uh, I'm not going to change the colours around, I'm not going to invert them. So I hit select with this. Go to my layers. I've got a color here, so I'm just going to go option delete that fills it with that foreground color. So I'll go to the midtone one. I'll load that up. Go back to my layers, I'll make a new layer above it and I'm going to lighten this color up because this is the midtones and I'm heading more to the, um, the highlights. Option delete to fill it with color, command D, get rid of that. Channels, now I'm onto this one where the focus, because remember it's the white that I'm going to fill, I'm not worried about the background because that's controlled by a mask. So. Um, the light area here, I'll load it up into the layers. I'll make a new layer. And <clears throat> so I'll fill that with a, a very light color. Okay. Um, if I hold down the option key, so I hold it down first, and then I just drag this mask, I can. Um, Stick it beside all those layers, and the same thing, I can drop it over the purple. It'll ask me to replace it. And so everything is masked, and it's just showing the white um, background. And of course, all of these can um, change in their uh, change in their color. So if I, uh, let's try, let's try something that's a little bit, um, a little bit freakier. Option shift, delete to keep the transparency. And 
and let's go okay oh this might start to look a bit off I know it's pretty good and this one will go for some uh, light blue so you can start to um, uh, mess with the mess with the colors but these is black and white uh, screens we we'll jump back in the <coughs> back in the channels it's all black and white so this uh, and as far as um, printing out a screen goes we can we can invert all this sort of stuff but this is the screen that's going to give us highlights and then the midtones and then the shadows so you can layer it up and control it through here and then get your um, screens. But then as far as doing the physical thing goes, or digital, you can fill it with whatever color you want. Uh, what, you'll, what you'll find is even if you do it in a, a psychedelic kind of fashion, <coughs> you don't want to uh, swap the colors around in a weird way. So this one here is the darkest, the darkest color. So if I change this to, a light color you can see what happens in the background you get you get a negative because these darkest areas the eye and everything instead of being filled with a dark color with a light color they become they become negative so there are you know if you want your uh, image to look natural then when you're changing these colors you do have to think in, in tonality what's going to what's going to be darker and what's going to be what's well, going to be lighter. So the highlights, I have tried to make it a bit lighter rather than um, uh, picking a dark color, which would end up making it look a bit odd. Again, like a, um, uh, not a negative, but in this case, because it's kind of, if you understand uh, photography and solarization, then you'll know that it's a normal print and then you expose it to light and you're getting this kind of odd combination of uh, the negative and the positive together. So this image starts to look like a, a solarization. So uh, we can also uh, manipulate this a bit further. So if you, think of, if you think of screen printing as something where it's a simplification, so there's still a lot of detail in this image. Let's have a go with changing these channels. So if we go to one of these channels, and the one that, one that I quite like to use, uh, filter, might have used it with you guys before, and if I go to the filter gallery, is this one called stamp. Oh, so I just have to change my window so I can see it. So you can change the smoothness, making it a bit more uh, globular. See here, and you can change it right down to something that's lighter. Or darker. So I obviously like the, the darker option. The smoothness could probably come down a tad. And I'll go OK. And I can do the same thing with these others. I can go in and uh, customize them. I can pick the same filter or I can go in and just control it a wee bit more how light I want it, whether I do want the smoothness to be as smooth as it is, go OK. And one more. Yeah, let's go with that. So these again can all be um, uh, 
uh, it can all be loaded up. So, ah, oh. oh, okay. Sorry, it's got. I've got a menu in front of um, another one. I couldn't see my full screen. Okay, so now if I go to my channels, oh, the first thing I do actually is I go to the layers and I'll just um, select all and delete these. So I've still got that dark color in the background. Channels, so this one. So this is gonna be the, so the, the purple is doing these dark areas and this is gonna be the next color, so if I Select this and load it. Go to my layers. And again, I'll just, I'll kind of go for a, um, a skin tone to begin with. So I'm going to have a slightly darker color. Back to the channels. I'll go to my midtones. I'll load that up, go to the layers, and so I'm going to make this color a bit lighter. Back to the channels. And then this one that was dealing just with the um, highlights, go to the layers. And so we end up with this. So starting to try and um, uh, simplify the screen down somewhat. Now, um, oh, I should have actually uh, left those other ones there because you can you can start to do a wee bit of a of a mixture. And actually, I'll just I'll just replicate a channel quickly. So. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to get the um, the mid the midpoint as we did before, like trying to get these grays through the middle. I'll go OK. I'll select it. Go to my layers, and so it's basically I'm doing a different version of this one. So I'll make a new layer just beside it. I'll get the eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to. Select that same color, option delete. And now if I, I'll need to um, give it a mask and everything. Uh, it's a little bit um, uh, uh, too subtle. It looks like maybe I picked the wrong the wrong color. It's pretty subtle, so I can change the um, color up. But now you're getting kind of a mixture of a mixture of both. So let's chuck another color in there, so we can really see what's happening. So you can see with the detail there, and actually I'll change this to the um, same color as well. So you can see with the red, that's our screen, but then we put the other one in where we haven't gone through the stamp filter, and it still retains all that detail. So it might be, it might be something that you say, okay, I'm going to keep this um, globular, but actually, I want to keep the um, the detail in the, the the kind of the the hair and the hair and the eyes. So let's go and have a, a quick go. Go to the channels, and again I can make another channel. Paste it.
So this should give us some, um, essentially we're filling the whites, but because we fill the whites, it should give us some definition around the, um, the eyes and everything. So if I load that up, I go to the layers, it's gonna be um, this one that we're replicating. So I'm, I'm just gonna switch everything off for a second so I can see what I'm doing. I'll make a new layer. I'm going to option delete. So fill it. Go okay, command D and the same, same thing, hold down option, drag the mask up so they're all using the same mask. So now if I switch this off, instead of using the globular one, we've now got all this detail. And I can use these other globby ones up here. So the, the highlights are done through the stamp tool. Uh, this one here, I'm just gonna change it back to a color that's in between. Option, shift, delete. So again, now it's this kind of uh, cross between the two. So we have one channel that we're getting all the detail and then the others we've put through the the stamp filter but in essence and if i just for a second if i just change everything to um uh to black and white Uh, this one here. This is um, this is all we've got, and I'll switch this stuff off. Is essentially we have all our screens, so we have this one here, and we can print it whatever color we want. We then have another one where we're printing those dark areas. This one that's printing the midtones, and we can either have that, where it's a bit globular, or a bit finer. You'll see with these as well as we can we can go in and we can tidy some of these things up. Like you'll see, there's this kind of halo, halo line, so we can tidy that stuff up. So with this one, I'll say, okay, I'll leave it as black, and we're going to use this as the um, as the next screen. Whoops, oh, I don't know what paintbrush I've got there. And again, using those um, masking tools, I can decide you know, what I want to leave in and what I want to take out. If I do want to come in and um, and tidy it up, you know, I might just um, I might just uh, leave it as it is. If that's my preference, or get rid of all these funny little um, edge bits. No, you have total. Um, control over this. So now with this one, I can say, okay, I'm going to do the dark skin tone and then over the black. And so all this edging has been tidied up. And so everything's in black and white, except this one, we're now printing brown. And then you would go to the next one, decide what you're going to have. And, um, and when it's an actual screen print, you would choose the ink, whatever it is, and print it out this way. And then you're going to end up with this kind of multi-layer multi -layer print going on. So I'm going to... Um,